This lecture is called Dissed Dan. Or are these really the right markers for these kind of birds? No, that's a Crayola marker. That's awesome. Okay, this is the last one. I need to find markers. Does anyone know a room that has markers that are fine? Or are we supposed to just use these and then just like like spray? You could use like a sanitizer or like a um, <laughs> there is the expo spray. Should be for expo marks. Oh, that's not great. You can't do this ruins my um, accessibility advantage. Okay, I need to try to find a marker for us. So this is called This Ed Dan. Um, this is a classic teaching tool that many of you probably remember from a novice class or an introduction to debate class. The reason it is useful to take, even if you feel like you have some experience, is because if you understand the concepts that we are going to be learning in the next 45 minutes or so, and there will be kind of some opportunities for some of you to come on up and write out the scenarios yourself for what This Ed Dan will be doing, then there is really no debate argument that you can't understand because every single argument that we discuss follows the Toolman model of argumentation where there's a claim, there are grounds that substantiate that claim, there is something that we call a warrant, which is how we interpret the grounds, and then there's an impact, right? So every argument has the following portion. So claim, which is what are we saying? There is the warrant, which is why is what we're saying 
true. And there's the impact, which is trying to answer the question of who cares. And in this model of argumentation, there was something here which we kind of skip and combine with warrants that's called grounds. And this is like the data or, or evidence that substantiates the warrant. So grounds might be a graph or it might be personal experience or it might be a math equation. It could be any number of things. And then we want to explain why our grounds, we interpret our grounds via the explanation of a warrant. Um, this is about disadvantages and taking this idea and applying it to scenarios. So we have Cliff, uh, okay, so the first thing that we learn when doing disadvantages, can anyone tell me what is the first part of a disadvantage? Yeah? Uniqueness. Uniqueness, exactly. So uniqueness. And how should we define uniqueness? Yeah. The status quo. Right, okay, yeah, good, status quo. So for someone who doesn't know what status quo means, if someone, if you were explaining this to a friend and you were like, uniqueness is the status quo, and they're like, what does status quo mean? What would you tell them? Like, what's happening now? Like, happening exactly. Now. Yeah. No, that's perfect. What's happening now? Okay? Um, there's one other component to this that we'll get into when we talk about other portions of the DA that are not the four basic parts, like there's some kind of hidden ones, which is kind of the purpose of this is to teach you some of those. But there's another one, what is going to happen? So what is going to happen or what is likely to happen? So for example, if we're debating the economy a ton, right? So if we are reading an argument about the economy and we have a uniqueness argument that says, the stock market is doing this well now. It's relatively stable. There aren't major fluctuations, but we think that it's likely that the market will collapse in the near term because of wage stagnation or something like that. So that is a uniqueness argument, but it is predictive of a future change in the world that is not the result of any action that's been proposed, but we're just like, we think the following is going to happen. So that's another type of uniqueness argument. Does that make sense to you? Makes sense. Okay, cool. So what is the uniqueness for Disad Dan in this situation? He's on the cliff. He's on the cliff? What specifically? What part of the cliff? The edge. The edge, the edge. right. So edge it's of the edge. cliff. Yes, exactly. Now, we want to relate it to some kind of link. So the app says has a plan. So the plan says change the status quo, right? So the affirmative, no matter what type of affirmative you're reading, inevitably you're making the argument that you are changing the status quo in some way. And the historical purpose of this has to do with debates two primary burdens. Does anyone know what the two primary burdens in debate is? Yeah, that. Burden of proof and burden of rejoinder. Great. So the AF has the burden of proof. Uh huh. And the NAG, burden of rejoinder. Understanding these two things is crucial to everything we do here. So the affirmative has to demonstrate that the change that they've proposed is a desirable one. The negative has to demonstrate that that change is in fact not desirable. That either it would be better to do nothing, or it would be better to do some other thing instead that can't be combined with the affirmative change. So that's where all of this originates from. So now the fun part, we need what? We have our uniqueness argument, we need to finish writing this DA. What is the next part of the DA that we need to write? The link. Yeah, the link. So what, what might our link be? If you do this, it could lead to that. Well, yeah, so if you do this, it could lead to that. So an example of a link might be, let's say, the link causes Dan to be pushed off the cliff. Okay, so that is our, our link, is that the change that you've endorsed results in Dan getting pushed off. So that is the link. Okay, so link is 
if we were going to define link, it would be the thing the plan changes. Uh -huh. Slash what the plan does. <coughs> okay, so this is what the plan does. It then has an impact, which is which is which is what why why should we care? Why should we care? Because remember, we need to answer. We always need to care about the portion of who cares. We always have to keep that in mind and make sure that we're explaining that. So, what is the who cares part? Yeah. Does Dan dies if people love him? Great. Yes, Dan. <laughs> Right, so Dan ends up down here. Um, his his little his little hat is like off to the side. It's been discarded. It's gonna gonna get moth worn. It's exact. And yeah, people love Dan. It's, it'd be really bad if Dan died, right? Okay. So what am I missing? So we have impact, and I really like that you said Dan dies and people love him because it kind of illustrates something important here, which is that there's something here called an internal link, okay, which is anything caused by the link that <laughs> not... Sis, you did not just... What happened? She drew it on her computer. Oh, this is not the impact, okay? And by the way, when I write impact, I'm gonna write exclamation point. That's what I, when I think impact, that's how I write it. So if you're confused why there can be exclamation points all over the board, that's why. The impact is the, the answers the who cares part. But like, if you're ever, do you ever find yourself confused about the difference between these things? Anyone ever? Oh no. No, you don't find yourself confused? It makes one of us. Uh, Rich, uh, Haven, do you ever find yourself confused? Uh, yeah. Hmm. The link, um, like how do you get from the link to the impact? Yeah, like how do we get from this to this is really important and there's a lot of detail that can be missing. But also like internal link and impact are super muddled because when you all described what the impact of the DA was, you were like, he dies. And it's bad that he died because people loved him. And look what we did. It wasn't enough to just be like, the impact is he died. We then had to find another reason why him dying was bad. It's just because people loved him. So is the impact him dying or is the impact people who love Dan will be sad about it? The point is to illustrate that no matter what the impact is, there's always one more step you can take in terms of explaining the importance of that impact. And... One thing you could do to get really, really good at extending DAs is when you're practicing and you're doing redos and rebuttals, um, and you can do this all season long. There's something called the two sentences drill. Has anyone done the two sentences drill? Okay, so the two sentences drill is that you explain something conversationally to whoever, a, a, ideally a person who knows things about debate, but it doesn't have to be someone who knows something about debate. And you give them this speech, you explain your argument, and if there's something where they're like, I don't quite understand what you mean by this, or I don't quite understand why this is important, that is a thing you then have to say two more sentences about. So if you're like, you know, explain an argument, they're like, this part, I don't get it, can you say two more sentences? And then you say two more sentences about that. And this is kind of a tool to teach you how to fully explain the implications of your arguments and not just rely on you know arguments being dropped or 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 kind of small versions of things you you kind of fully explain it um and and that's an example of that so we need two more sentences on the internal link because Haven's right how do we get how, how do we get to death like what happened in this what happened here what is the reason that dan fell the wind blew too the, hard yeah. and he just fell off the cliff. Okay, yeah, so we could say the wind blew too hard, right? That's that that's our link. But when he when he was pushed off the cliff, why does he fall to the ground? Gravity. Yeah, there you go. Gravity. That's exactly what I was looking for. So gravity. So now gravity is 
part of our internal link explanation. Isn't hitting the ground itself, or like, isn't the ground part of the internal link? Yes, I, yes, exactly. Thinking, yes, so, so this, <laughs> this, this is part of our internal link because there's too much force, right? Like, you know, we've got, we, we know this is like nine meters per second per second or something like that, right? And like that plus his mass of say like, you know, 75 kilos or something. And we can figure out the reason why it's bad for him to hit this. But given this like mathematical component, what might we say if we're affirmative? What is a way that we could disprove this internal link? I'll give you one hint. We, 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 could, we could deny the existence of gravity. Um, that's one approach we could make. Uh, sometimes you all love to take the only part of the DA that makes sense and read a bunch of cards about that premise. So this would be the equivalent of that. But other than denying the existence of gravity, how would we, we disprove this internal link? Uh, yeah, Christian. Um, I guess you like, the, the plan didn't cause the wind. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So we could attack the link. So we could attack any of these four portions. So one thing we do is attack the link. So we could say, um, we could say, uh, 2AC, no link, plan does not cause the wind. Let's talk more about this. There are a lot of ways we can make this plan did not cause, because you said plan did not cause the wind. Those were the words you used. So for some of the folks here who have gone for DAs a lot, what are all the different ways we could make the arguments plan did not cause the wind? Because there are a lot. All kinds. Okay, yeah, great. Right. So if that has this argument, what if our argument isn't even that the plan doesn't cause wind, it's actually that wind is inevitable because this is a super, super windy spot and Dan was just standing out here on the cliff in a place where there's constant gusts of wind. And so the thing that caused Dan to fall to his doom was not the plan at all, but, but was some other inevitable thing. And so it's not a reason the plan is a bad idea. It's just a reason that Dan needs to learn to read a map better <laughs> or needs to check the weather app first. Okay, great. Yeah, so all alternative. So this one. So how do we contest wink? And I want us to list every single one. So we could say one, plan does not cause wind. Can we two can we alternative, alternative <coughs> causes to wind? Yeah. The wind pushes Dan the other way away from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three. Plan yes wind but opposite. So this, the words we use for this is link turn. So we call this a link turn. So in debate, a turn is defined as the opposite of, right? So think of like, if you're playing Uno, the like, the like switcheroo card, right? It goes the opposite, you switch it to the opposite direction, right? Does that make sense? So link turn, instead, you we say, this is wrong. We're, you're right that the plan generates wind. We put a windmill right next to this cliff, but the windmill that the plan put next to the cliff is right over here, and it's actually pushing wind this way. And what if, so this is another interesting point. So remember, what were we saying about Dan's uniqueness? He was on the edge of the cliff, but was he in danger? No. No. So if all we say, if the only argument that we make is that the wind pushes Dan backwards. What is the utility of that? How do we make that argument even stronger for us? Trinity, yeah. Would it be no impact because he wouldn't go over the cliff? Well, so yes, so it could, but, but we want to turn it into offense. So offense, just sidebar. Offense, why you win. Defense. Why you don't lose. So our link, our no link, our link turn argument of we build a windmill to push Dan the other direction right now, which category does that fall into currently? 
Not well, maybe. Oh, uh, it could. Yeah. Not, it's defense because Dan is fine. Both sides have agreed Dan is fine now. The negative has said the plan puts a windmill behind Dan and pushes him off the cliff. The affirmative has said we put a windmill in front of Dan, which keeps him on the cliff. But we both agree that he's totally fine now. So how do we turn this from defense into offense? Do you have an idea, Christian? No. Oh, sorry. We could just see like um, the wind actually moves Dan so far back that he's on the other edge of the. Okay, you're really, really, really close, and I do think that there's an interesting argument to be had there, which is, there's something in debate, also, I'm throwing a lot of terms at you, but there's something called a strategic concession, okay? So let's say that your opponent's link turn evidence about pushing Dan backwards is so strong that you push him this way so hard and so fast, he now smashes his head onto the ground because he's lifted into the air and picked up by the wind and dies that way. So there is a way of the negative conceding your link turn and then saying that causes other problems. So that's a way that DAs can get really complicated really fast. That's not quite the answer I'm looking for here, but does that make sense, Christian? It makes sense. Okay. Yes. Straight turn it. You say Dan's gonna jump off the cliff anyways, but the plan allows it to go back on. Okay. I don't love the. Okay. I don't. I, the, the phrasing of jump off the cliff adds it's additional going problems. To go, like, but yeah, yeah. So let's say, let's say we have a we can test right. So link turn requires two parts. I just like forgot how to draw an arrow. I just like, okay. So there's two parts. There's, you need non-uniqueness and you need the link turn. Because the link turn by itself, that we put a windmill in front of him, doesn't actually solve an impact because Dan is then fine no matter what. The negative can just be like, all right, fine. We'll concede the windmill's in front of him. We're not going for the disadvantage anymore. It's all fine, Dan's safe. But what if we said non-unique, wind is coming now and is going to push him off? What if we said wind is coming now and is going to push him off, only putting a windmill in front of him saves him? That combination of arguments creates the, the term over here, straight turn, um, which is to turn the disadvantage into an advantage. So you're uno reversing the DA and turning it into an advantage. Let's, let's imagine another scenario where we could build uh, non-uniqueness and link turn. What's another, so I'm gonna draw, uh, are we okay on, can I erase things at this point? Are we all good? Okay. Uh, I'm actually just going to keep using this. F equals M. Okay, so now we might have say, what if the F, what if, what if we made the argument that Dan is already falling off the cliff and only the windmill, um, what about trampoline? I was gonna say trampoline. That's cool. Okay, but that's totally different though. We're going to get to the trampoline, don't worry. Trampolines are an important part of this impact. Yeah. But so what if we said uniqueness? So uniqueness, what's happening now? Dan is falling to his doom. Only the plan's windmill that it pushes pushes Dan back to safety onto the cliff. So now we've turned disadvantage Daniel into advantage Daniel. <laughs> Um, does this make sense? Okay, so um, there are many ways that we could further contest the premise of this whole thing. So let's put him back here. 
Uh, I glossed over this all causes thing. Who wants to give some examples of alternative causes? Some, yeah, yeah, down. That's exactly right. We can read a card that's like actually there's a Dan has a mortal enemy. <laughs> oh, why is he so and small? why is he so hated? Because he's crouching. He's, he's crouching. Like, oh, he's, he's, he's crouching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, come on. It's it's gotta, you're gonna if I'm like lumbering like this, like you're, not, you're gonna turn yeah, around and know. If I'm like, it's deep looking. You know, like you gotta you gotta sneak up. So is yeah, so Dan is getting pushed off the cliff. Uh, oh, this person got a crossbow, actually. Oh. oh, this is like tier, like, um... That's a bow now. He's gonna shoot him off a cliff. There we go. I don't know if anyone will get that, but... Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if there was, like, a super, like, nihilistic person in here? Mm -hmm. Um, what if you could see behind you? Uh, huh? Right, so we talked about that earlier. What if, what if... What if he was cliff right. jumping and like his parachute just didn't work? I like this better. What so, so for the purposes of this discussion, <laughs> we're gonna go with it serves the same purpose as what you suggested, Christian. But we're gonna pretend that Dan just like thinks it'll be fun to jump off the cliff and isn't trying to like, he's not go trying to, to hurt his, himself. He's not trying to hurt himself. He just like is like, oh, you know, it'd be fun cliff jumping. Um, without a but he forgot that there should be water under the cliff and just like yeah that yeah, yeah. Like, yeah when oh, he was a kid know. right when he was a kid there was water over here it was oh. soft it was right. like some nice change, right. 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 change made it go away so now he's actually gonna die when he jumps yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, but, and actually good. what we're saying right now, now is yeah. super yes. important because yeah. impacts yeah. so remember how we we talked about how links can have uniqueness because the, well, we'll get more into link uniqueness, but impacts can have uniqueness too, right? So we could say, uh, make arguments about how this bottom, right, is not, is determined, um, is going to get better or worse, is better or worse, right? We could say, well, someone suggested something else, which is when Dan jumps off, we could say at the, we could make some arguments about why he wouldn't actually fall to his death. What how, what are some ideas you have for that? It's not a high enough cliff. Great. The cliff cliff is small. Right? So for example, again, econ DA. The neg is like, if we do the app, the economy is going to crash, it's gonna be so sad, and then nukes are gonna go <coughs> flying all over the place. Mm. Like, what if the economic crash that occurs from the app is tiny? It's probably not going to cause that big of a problem. So we could say the cliff is small. Dan's fine. He's done this before. He does this every day after school. The oh, nag is making a huge deal out of this man just trying to live his life. <laughs> just let let him be. Let him exist. He's going to jump down there, pull out his favorite book, and read under the the cliff, which provides shade because the sun that's coming up, you know, is going to give him a sunburn. And that's actually it's good that he's jumping off the cliff. And the plan causing the wind is actually an amazing thing, okay? We're helping Dan out. We're, get, we're, we're, we're just gently putting him over the edge, right? So Cliff is too small, he's fine. Yeah. I have a question. All right, so the internal link is like, for example, Dan does die, right? And people care. So the internal link is that people are sad now? Or so people... so the, in that description, the, the impact is people are sad because so he died. The internal, link. the internal link is that he died because what, because you always ask yourself, how did that happen? So first, so this is a great question. So people are sad and you could always, you always start at the end. So for, who here sometimes gets confused about internal link chains? Yeah? In theory. Right, so the way that we teach internal link chains in debate is this. A leads to B leads to C dot, right? That's how we teach it. Another way of doing it is to start at the end. So, people sad. Uh, people sad. What's the cause of that? Well, probably his death. What's the cause of that? He jumped. He, well, <laughs> fall off cliff. Cause of that? The wind. The wind. Cause of the wind? The planet. The right, the planet. Right? And if we start backwards, it's often much, much easier 
to figure out what things we want. And now we now when we're cutting our DA, we know we need a card for each thing or a card that contains multiple things, right? You don't need a card for every internal link if your cards contain multiple internal links in one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, what are some other things that we could say about the impact? So, and this word, by the way, so this vocab term, impact defense. And the first example we gave is Cliff Short Dan Fine. Or people aren't that sad when you die. Okay. Right. What if he was an orphan yeah, yes. and he had nobody killed him? Yeah. Okay, so, so we could we could challenge, right? So when we're planning to be affirmative, we gotta contest the impact at some level. And right here, so we could contest it here and say, Cliff too small. No. And do you notice how if we contest this, we're also contesting this and this? Yes. That's why you can't do a link turn in an impact turn. True. Yes. So Say more about that. That is that is a, what you just said is totally true. What do you mean? What, like, what prompted you to think that? Like, if you're contesting the fact that the cliff too small, well, that's more of like, um, oh, the cliff. Oh, wait, sorry. If you think that the cliff too small, then you can't. Like, you can't also say that. No, no. Impact wouldn't make sense because the impact wouldn't happen. Right. Exactly. The impact doesn't happen. So all of these parts don't make any sense if you win this. Right? So whenever you've heard a judge or a coach or anyone say, you should contest the scenario higher up on the internal link chain, or have you ever heard some version of this? Yeah, yeah that's what this, that's all this means is figure out, and you can write this out yourself, like you can start at the end and work backwards and then figure out where is this DA wrong? Like what part of this is wrong? Now, I think the thing that a lot of debaters do, and I'm glad you mentioned this because this is, in my opinion, generally not the best way to contest the impact. It's generally better to do it higher up, like as high up as possible. But we could say, <laughs> you are happy. Dan equal orphan, so no one cares. <laughs> was the suggestion that was, was given? Like, yeah, we could do that for sure. For, okay. Like for sure, for sure. But I think generally this somewhat stronger than this, because if this, this doesn't matter in the first place. And so if this impact is like, um, let's imagine that this is a real DA and it's like, um, you know, J, JG lead and, or this is um, extinction, right? At the end. Okay. Because so many people are sad that they are. So die. this is extinction. How do we get to extinction? Uh, nuke war. Nuke war. Great. Nuke war. Why did how nuke did we war get, happen? Of how did we get to nuke war? Dan was the you general. The Dan was the army. Yeah. Dan, oh, he figured. Who thought it was a yeah, they gave him a job. But Dan so Dan, okay, Dan, he figured, <laughs> Franz, Ferdinand type of guy, right? <laughs> the Dan, wind was created by Dan the secretly is the Franz Ferdinand of our, of our era. Okay? No. The wind was created by the other right. army and pushed them off. Right, and Dan was killed was killed by the wind, which was caused by the job guarantee by that, that job. guaranteed, yeah, that guaranteed uh, windmill building. Windmill and like right. renewables, yes. Right, so if we build wind turbines, it will result in wind being generated, which will kill the Franz Ferdinand of our time, which sparks a nuclear war, which causes extinction. And we gotta ask ourselves, where do we contest the impact in here? Now we could be like extinction, not whatever, not that bad. But like, it probably be a little, a little more intuitive, a little stronger to contest one of these other parts, right? Like maybe we say Dan isn't the Franz Ferdinand of our time, or we say that his death would not in fact cause a nuclear war, or we, we contest the windmills being built or something. But generally, the higher up we start, the more success we're gonna have. Um, and you know, the, the easier it is to just make logical point, point logical flaws. And the other thing to think about when you're negative writing a disadvantage is the more steps it takes to get to the end, the more places the affirmative gets to poke holes. So let's change this scenario. And you say Cliff is small. He won't die. Okay. And I say, okay, fine, fine. Cliff's too small, he's not gonna, but you know what? He's still breaking his ankle. 
Like he's, you know, I'm Ned, right? My two and C, my two and C to Cliff Small, two and C, Dan breaks ankle. Okay, and then I say, but like. It's not enough for me to be like breaking ankles bad. That's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not winning a debate on breaking ankles bad, but which by the way, breaking your ankle, terrible. That's a real impact. But let's, you know, it's debate. So we want to get silly with it. And then we're like, you know, we want to say that causes him to go to the hospital. Um, but because Dan goes to the hospital at that exact moment, it trades off with another patient being seen. And that patient is Joe Biden. Know that patient? Nicki yes, Minaj. Huh? That, that, patient, that is, patient is Nicki Minaj. And right. at, so people see Nicki Minaj, they deny fair treatment. Nicki Minaj died, now the virus take over the world. That. Oh, right. So yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> It's just too easy to contest. Which leads to global authoritarianism. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Biden does that. Okay. So this is something that happens all the time as you get more and more advanced in debates. Is because sometimes, sometimes the cliff really is too small. But just because the cliff's small doesn't mean it's not bad. And if it's bad, then we can use our creativity to result in, you know, Nicki Minaj related authoritarian violence across the planet, right? Yeah. So now the 2NC has created a new internal link chain, right? A new scenario. And this happens all the time in debates where the 2NC makes and reads a new scenario. Um, yeah, so some other examples would be like, we could contest the premise of what's down here. We could say, this is, what are some ideas about what this could be? So we've been calling this doom but what might this this doom situation be instead what could we what could we say trampoline. okay we could say it's a trampoline right so we it's could say lake. or you could say the plan for the trampoline uh we could say so we could take the trampoline what would we say if what is this an example of if we say it's a trampoline the impact team factor uh, why do we, why do you think it's an impact term because a trampoline needs to fun and fun is good okay so we can, we have two okay great wouldn't an impact term just be like, oh, Dan Brown is good? Isn't that an internal link term, though? So, Dowda, I'm going to get to your question in a second. The answer is yes, but there are other ways to impact turn as well. Um, so, so impact turn, and it also depends what you consider to be the terminal impact. So, if our terminal impact is Dan's death, then we could say, yeah, like, you know, we could say Dan dying is good because Dan is actually... Um, a spy from an alien civilization that was planning to conquer the world. So and so it's really super cool. important that Dan died because otherwise an alien civilization conquers us all. We have to serve aliens forever, right? That's an impact turn. So that is the thing, the end result is good. So what I am interested in discussing though is something I find a little more interesting which is to do with this. So it's similar to an impact turn, but it has to be the internal link. Internal link turn? Yeah, internal link turn. That's crazy. So we also have this thing called internal link turn, okay? What might we say to turn one of these internal, so here are our steps. So back to our steps, people sad, death, Cliff, the fall off the cliff. So we're missing this fall off the cliff into pit of doom. Nice. I think we should turn this. How might we turn the pit of doom? Trashing. Yeah. It's a pit of happiness. It's a pit of happiness. It's not doom. It's a portal to a different dimension where everyone is having fun and partying all the time. Right. So the so we'll concede. Dan's on the edge of the cliff now. We'll concede that the plan pushes him off the cliff. We'll even concede he falls into the pit. But what we disagree about is whether the pit is doom or whether the pit is happiness. We think that Dan is going to have a soft landing, 
that that sock landing is going to be awesome, and he's going to be able to enter this secret club of fun and happiness that he gets to hang out and party with for the rest of his life. So that is, you know, and, and that is implicitly making what argument? So in order for our internal link term to be good, what do we need to say with the internal link term? Yeah. Doesn't it feel like I'm down here? You know, like, you know you need this? Well, actually, wait, what was the part where we were like, you going to like, actually, I give up. Oh, wow. don't give up, don't give up. Just keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking ideas. You can do anything with Dan. There's no limit to the creativity that can, can occur with Dan. You feel like non-uniqueness. He's not that, like, you can just be like, he's on the edge of a cliff, but the cliff, like, on the other side is like happening. Like, yeah, yeah, right. But we need to we need to disprove something because if I am affirmative and you're like the pit of doom is actually a portal to happiness, what am I going to say? What is my natural, normal, everyday answer to that argument? Doubt it. If you're affirmative, then yeah. wouldn't you also say no impact because deterrent makes everything happiness is good. Yeah, which makes the other people happy, meaning no impact. Okay. Yes. Correct. But what I'm, I'm going to help you all out a little here, okay? We've said that once he hits this, he gets transferred to a portal. But what if the fall caused by the gravity still kills him on the way down? What if he dies right as he's about to enter the portal of happiness? Oh, oh, no, no, no. So what do we need to combine with, with our doom portal as a happiness portal argument? What argument do we need to make along with that to ensure Dan has happiness? That he won't. Gravity doesn't exist. Oh, oh, yeah, so <laughs> correct, correct. We could say, we sure could say gravity doesn't no, exist. Wait, but then he doesn't go into the happiness portal. Right. He flies over. Then he doesn't right. go into the happiness portal. That that is that is on view with this one. Yeah. You deny gravity, then you lose your happiness portal advantage. Well, Which you is, swim through yeah. the air. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Would you, you, could, you need an internal. Yes. You, is we need, we need to contest that we need to con yes so we need some kind of internal link defense to contest this impact so we need to make sure that when Dan is about is that the fall is not going to hurt him right we don't want him to go to the happiness portal with a broken arm we want him to go into the happiness portal yeah. all healthy and ready to party right what is that? yeah okay i have a question so he goes into the happiness portal everything like that what about, okay, so you remember when, you, when we were saying that he was going to die and the people were going to be sad. Yeah. So now that he's in the happiness portal, he's still going. These people don't know where he is, so the people are still sad. So, so what sad. happened? That, 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 is, uh, a, a, that is precisely an affirmative argument that you could make, which is that, the, that despite this internal link turn, the thing that the affirmative thinks it's solving with their internal link turn doesn't actually solve our impact. Because the argument we're going for is not actually, and that's why I thought it was so interesting when you were like, the impact is not Dan dying, but that people are sad about it. So the internal link turn solves the Dan dying part, but it sure doesn't solve the actual impact we're going for, which is that people are sad about losing him. So there's still an impact anyways. So there's still an impact anyways, right? The DA still has an impact. And this happens all the time in debates where the affirmative turns a part of the DA and wins that turn, but because it doesn't interact with the neg's actual impact, it doesn't end up mattering. So the affirmative goes down this rabbit hole trying to generate all this offense about something, and it's meaningless because there's no terminal impact, it doesn't interact with the terminal impact at all. You're turning the wrong thing. So it's really important that when we are trying to turn disadvantages into advantages, that we're thinking a lot about the interaction with the terminal impact. Um, does anyone have that time? Uh, uh, we still have some time. Great. So we need to. <laughs> Wait. What would? You, what? 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 What should we pair it with? Uh, well, we need, well, we need to contest this. So this was all that we need to contest this impact. So, so we need to win that whatever internal link turn that we've made does not still result in the terminal impact of the DA. 
So we need to read defense to the people get sad part. And that could be like, he could come back out of the happiness portal anytime he wants to. It could be like, he'll bring his friends over. It's a two-way portal, not a one-way portal. The affirmative might be like, well, you're wrong about this because once Dan gets into the happiness portal, he's never leaving. He's never telling anyone about it. He's going to be down there forever. And we get to have a whole debate about that premise. So yeah. this is what the neg says in response to the app, like, like we, we have to read internal link defense and we have to read li like, it, like, so, so there's no terminal impact. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that's why, you know, in order to go for an impact turn, we must also read impact defense. So for example, if we make the argument that growth, uh, that degrowth is good. So the, the, you know, let's say I read my affirmative, the negative reads a disadvantage that says that my affirmative crashes the economy and prevents growth. Um, the affirmative might then respond to that by saying that growth is actually good because p the planet's resources are finite, it's unsustainable, we need to degrow the economy in order to sustain the economy. And then the negative is like, okay, fine, right? The most common answer to this is like, maybe you're right in the abstract that we are running out of resources and we cannot continue to grow at the pace that we are, but in the short term, an economic crash would like hurt tons and tons of people and it would cause unemployment and it would cause the stock market to crash and it would ruin investment and it would hurt US, the, the United States' advantage relative to other powers, right? All of those things. And so we need, in order to successfully execute our impact turn, to contest the premise that the, the thing we are impacting, the thing we are saying is good, is not also bad. So like we could have an impact that is like, the affirmative has said that impact is good, the negative has said it is bad. If you don't contest your opponent's side of the story and only tell your side of the story, then you're not gonna get very far. Um, and the metaphor that judges will use to describe this, and maybe some of you have heard this before, is the debate was like two ships passing in a night, or the debate was a wash. Mm -hmm. That's because you're only telling your story and you're not explaining your story vis-a-vis -vis your opponent's story. Um, and the point of this, and then turning, so like turning this at Dan into this section, is to be a tool that can be applied to literally any argument and debate. Like, we're doing it for disadvantages. It is 100% the case that for a critique, or for an impact turn, or even for topicality, we can do this exact same process um, in order to figure out how our side of the story interacts with our opponent's side of the story. And then that is what produces strong, good rebuttals. Yeah. Also, just like you noticed, um, not everything has to be impact turn. I've seen some teams had impact turn racism before, and that was oh. a topic. Yeah, I mean, okay. people who do that shouldn't win. Um, like, that's a bad, that's obviously a, a poor strategy. Um, and it is unfortunate that that has happened to you. Um, okay, so one last thing that we need to talk about that is important. So let's imagine that our cliff is something like this. Oh, it's a slippery slope. Okay, so remember when I said uniqueness? So you are correct when you answer the question. Uniqueness means status quo, which is what is happening now. And then I said we're going to circle back to uniqueness is what is going to happen, like at the very beginning. So what might, might we say about here's our, our doom pit? Okay, so, oh, I forgot, I forgot to ask. Uh, is it back yeah, to being a yeah, doom pit? Yeah, I know. Pit? Crucial. Um, hmm? Is it back to being a doom pit? Yeah, yeah, for, at the beginning, yeah. So, for, so right now, it's back to being a doom pit. What do, would we say, how would we describe this? Yeah. I mean, if he knew it was to a doom pit, he chose to do it himself. Okay, yeah, so, <laughs> correct. He is, he is making, he is potentially making poor choices. Um, Dan's, Dan's made a lot of poor life choices in the last hour. It's been a tough day for him. But we want to describe oh, this. Oh, link. He falls yeah. into the pit either way. Yes, one. so links also have uniqueness, right? So where did I put link? I think I erased that part, but it's okay. So so this is another no, term there. for a, huh? Right next to it. Oh, there. yeah, right there. Beautiful. Okay. So link, link uniqueness. Okay, link uniqueness. Links also have uniqueness. And it is really important to think about what that is. And the thing that Thad said that the affirmative could say is uniqueness overwhelms. 
what so let's, your wind bend and he's falling in. So let's, yeah, so if it's the case that no matter what happened, no, so this is not, so uniqueness overwhelms link is not this, by the way. I'm going to redraw unique, so, so I don't want you to think this is unique, so overwhelms the link. Thad's suggestion is about something that is similar to this, but this would be another version of a non-uniqueness argument. And also, for my link to be true, right, what is the threshold required for my link to be true if this is what the cliff looks like? Think about the gust of wind. Yes, Think about the gust of wind. The, how strong does the gust? Yeah, it, it could be small, right? So in this version, the gust of wind needed to be big. We needed a big link. We needed a link that had a lot of magnitude, okay? So you've probably heard words like magnitude, time frame, probability for impacts. We use those for links too. We use them. It's all the same thing over and over and over when you really think about it. So we need the magnitude of the link to be large because, you know, he's on the edge of the cliff, but it's a flat surface. Or if we make an argument, right, if we think that Dan is right here, he's relatively safe, we need our link to be gigantic to push him all the way over the edge of the cliff which is why making uniqueness arguments about where on the cliff Dan is, but also what kind of cliff he's on, is super important. So for this scenario... Um, he's not sliding, he's just on... He's just on a slope, up. yeah. Or we could say he is sliding. We could say he's already sliding down the cliff, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, we, if our uniqueness argument for our disadvantage is the economy is collapsing now, that requires very different link debating than if our uniqueness argument is that the economy is strong now. Because if we're saying the economy is currently collapsing, the plan being a minor disruption would be much more significant than if the economy is doing well, then the plan's disruption needs to be large in order to change that trajectory. This has significant implications for answering the DA though, because if the uniqueness argument is the economy is doing terribly now, it does benefit the negative in the sense that the negative only needs to win a small link, but what can the affirmative do with the information that Dan is sliding now? What can the affirmative say? Yeah. Um, but then it's like some kind of like non-uniqueness thing. Well, wait, obviously yes, make it this is correct. You're saying the right thing. Or they can also make an off on. Oh wait, sorry, wait. Non-uniqueness claim would be like Dan is actually not sliding now. He is very much stable. The, you, so the affirmative could do that. But something I want to want us to think about is how do we compare? So debate is about comparison. Link turn versus link. Link turn versus link. If it's the case that Dan is likely to fall off now, then it is way more important that even if the affirmative risks adding some wind, right? So we've got windmills over here. We're building windmills, right? Um, there's some over here. There's some over here. Uh-huh. And that's what's generating the wind, right? If it's the case that Dan's probably falling off no matter what, you might as well take the chance that the plan saves him, which is how we explain link turn outweighs link. Because given uniqueness is that Dan's in big trouble, if given two options, do nothing, because there's a chance, do not, we should, the negative says we should do nothing because there's an even bigger chance that Dan falls off the cliff. The, the affirmative says, look, Dan's in a bad spot. He's in a bad place. And it is try or die to do the plan and build windmills. And maybe the windmills save him. Maybe they don't. But we know for sure if you vote negative, he's falling into the doom pit. So you may as well risk it and, and side with the link turn because that at least creates a chance for him to live by pushing him back up. Um, does this make sense? So link versus link turn is determined by uniqueness. And 
the argument that I just described was something that you might hear in debates as well, which is uniqueness determines the direction of the link. So I'll repeat that. The uniqueness determines the direction of the link. The other version of this is to say the opposite is true, which is link determines direction of uniqueness. Link determines direction of uniqueness. The reason we might say this is because it is really, really hard to know what's going on in the world. You can put in how's the economy doing into Google News and you can get 20 different people who are all relatively qualified, who have wildly different opinions about it. And so let's say the affirmative reads three cards that says the economy is failing. The negative reads three cards that say the economy is strong. It's hard to know which one is right. But the much more objective and easier thing to know is what, do, what the affirmative's impact is on it. And so the thing we should care about more than knowing whether, you know, like the thing that matters is not is Dan here, or is he here, or is he here, you know, like whether that, that it sloped like this, or like this, or like this, we don't really know. But if the wind is strong enough, it's pushing him off. Or if the wind in the other direction is strong enough, it's keeping him safe. So the thing we should care about isn't this, because that's hard to know. Dan's like meandering. He's walking around. He's having a good time. How are we supposed to know what part of the cliff he's on? It's changing all the time. People are in motion. But what we can know is if the link turn or the link are strong enough, that determines where he ends up no matter where he started. And that is, just to repeat, link determines direction of uniqueness. Does that make sense? Question? So it's the link, basically the link causes the uniqueness? It, it's, like, it's basically like the uniqueness isn't that important if the link is strong enough oh. or the link turn is strong enough. Um, and by not important, I don't mean doesn't matter. What I instead mean is it's really hard to figure out where Dan is because he's always on the move. But we can figure out how much wind the affirmative generates and what direction. Um, that's not always the case, by the way. Sometimes it's much easier to determine where Dan is than to determine the effect of the wind on Dan, right? Which is why I started with uniqueness determines direction of link. Both perspectives are valid. One, one last thing before we go, one last thing. I promise this is this is Thad's thing from before. It's important that you know this one, okay? What if this was my clip? Doom hit. And I said, the plan, this is the plan. To push him up? Oh. Wait, what's the plan? Yeah. So the plan, the plan, I'm saying the plan causes wind, which pushes Dan off the cliff. My impact is that he, he, he dies. What, how would you describe, what is the problem with this? Yeah. The plan always leads to him dying. Well, no. Maybe, Dauda, what do you think? Uh, it will be that the gravity is going to counteract the plan, so you need this overall the link. Correct. So uniqueness overwhelms the link. Uniqueness overwhelms the link. No matter how bad the plan is, Dan is so safe that it doesn't matter. So for example, let's return to the same economy DA I keep referencing. If the negative starts their disadvantage by reading a card that's like the economy is so strong, so resilient, so perfect, America's has the biggest economy in the world, our GDP is growing, even when our GDP contracts, the Federal Reserve will step in with automatic stabilizers and change interest rates to make sure it smoothly functions, even if the US economy faltered. Other countries around the world have enormous financial incentive to make sure that the US stays strong so they could be a good trade partner. They also don't want the US to go in to be destabilized because then they will be afraid they'll default on debt. Um, and their treasury bonds won't be worth anything anymore, right? So if I make all of these arguments about the economy being so, 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 so strong and inevitably strong, right? Inevitably, Dan is, at least, well, we're pretending this isn't, a, okay, <laughs> this makes it seem, so he's safe if he rolls down here, right? So no matter how good the link is, the uniqueness is so strong, Dan is so safe 
that he is never at risk of dying. And that is the last concept, uniqueness overwhelms the link. Um, there are more of these. Um, I don't know how much of this was reviewed for everyone or how much was new, but hopefully this gave you a new way to think about disadvantages. Um, and if you want to ask your lab leaders about what I mean by no matter what debate argument you are thinking about, this concept, this set of principles will always apply, you should ask them that. So this applies to critiques, topicality, framework, what have you. It's all the same basic premise of dissenting. So...